This lecture is part of the Fulbright Lecture Series organized by Fulbright Alumni Association of Nepal, FAN. Um, FAN has partnered with Kathmandu University School of Management, Kusum, to host this lecture today. Um, Dr. Man Bhattu Biswakarma was a Fulbright Visiting Scholar at Brandeis University, USA in 2016 to 2017 where he completed his uh, postdoc research in food security. He has a PhD in social inclusion in microfinance from Tribune University. Dr. Manbhadu Bismakarma has worked as a joint secretary of the government of Nepal uh, since 2010 and retired from service in April of 2021. Dr. Bismakarma, uh, sir, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for very nice introduction. The, the topics we selected is green growth development to cope with the coronomics. Uh, these are the presentation outline. I will talk a little about COVID-19, then the impact of COVID-19 pandemic, that is the coronomics. And uh, we'll talk about green growth, uh, global perspective, NEPLIS perspective, then how to greening the development um, uh, in a new normal condition. Um, COVID-19, it has evolved in uh, Wuhan, China in December 2019 and named COVID-19 in February 11 by WHO, uh, which stands for the coronavirus disease that was discovered in 2019. The pandemic has been declared by WHO on March 11. Uh, the Delta variant came into the existence uh, in May 2021, it has been detected in India. Um, then the Omicron, the recently, the Omicron variant, variant has been uh, seen um, uh, in the, in the, in the um, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. It has been identified in Botswana and South Africa in November 2021. It has also been said that, uh, said that there is another um, Omicron uh, variant, sub-variant coming in the um, ground. Uh, till now, uh, the confirmed cases, these are the confirmed cases, 3,076 uh, million confirmed cases till January uh, 30. And the, um, uh, Europe has the more cases than America. And the, the, it, it shows the raising trend of uh, the coronavirus cases. And when there is a Delta virus, it grows up. Then there is a Omicron variant. Then it again uh, keeps slope up. Death, there is uh, uh, more than 5 million um, deaths and more deaths are in Americas than Europe, Southeast Asia, like this. The death, this is the trend of death per day. And it has uh, been more than 10,000 per day. Uh, and the, uh, with Delta in October, with Omicron uh, in November. This is the trend of the death uh, confirmed with coronavirus. Uh, in Nepal, um, the, the total cases till February 2nd, uh, that is 0.9 million and 69,000 infected, 0.8 million recovered and 11,000, more than 11,000 people die with coronavirus. There is 5 million uh, PCR test till the date. Province-wise, the Bagmati has the highest um, um, cases of uh, coronavirus. Then we have province one, uh, uh, Gandaki, Gandaki. Uh, likewise, this is the trend of um, the cases of the uh, coronaviruses seen in the different provinces. And the Bagmati is has the highest. It is because the population uh, of Bagmati is highest in the country. So it it uh, it is related with the population um, uh, density. So, so it has the highest uh, coronavirus cases. Uh, globally, uh, almost 61% of the world population has got at least one uh, dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. 
and uh, globally 10.12 billion doses are managed um, globally and uh, it counts 21.27 million per day. However, only 10% people from low-income country have received at least one dose. Therefore, there is a very um, um, different um, um, vaccination uh, among the countries. Fully vaccinated, um, uh, there is almost 70% uh, population in high-income countries, whereas there is below 4% in the low-income countries. So, it, it shows the you know, vaccine inequality uh, globally. And it has been a um, very uh, permanent issue nowadays. In Nepal, total doses given, um, almost 29 million doses has been given to the people. Fully vaccinated, 13 million. And that counts almost 45% fully vaccinated. But just before yesterday, uh, there was a, a press note that it, um, uh, it has been increased to 60% uh, in Nepal. Chronic means then what is the impact of um, uh, this pandemic to the economy? And that, that has been termed as the chronic means. And I termed it, and uh, th th there is a paper on, on this um, terminology, and it has been now used um, um, by several uh, scholars. The most uh, influence, influence uh, that has been um, affected by the coronavirus pandemic is unemployment. That is the biggest challenge with this um, pandemic. Climate change, uh, in terms of climate change, there is some positive impact as well. Inflation and uh, food insecurity, that is price volatility is um, 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 severely affected. Rising debt and educational losses. The growth projection, most of the countries has the negative um, uh, growth during the uh, coronavirus pandemic. Uh, even the, the advanced economy has the biggest uh, negative growth during the, uh, during the period. The, um, uh, as I said earlier that the most affected area is the employment. There is 2.7 billion workers four out of five of the world's human resources uh, are in full or partial layoffs. That, uh, you know, gives the impact if, of the, um, uh, you know, life of the people. Likewise, there was a global trade projected fall by 27% in the second quarter of the year 2020, but it has been uh, uh, estimated that it has been risen uh, even more uh, in the end of 2020. There is a great loss of output. If there was no coronavirus pandemic, the world would have raised 12.5 trillion US dollar equivalent assets in the globe. But due to this pandemic, the globe has lost 12.5 trillion US dollar equivalent uh, output. And that means that is the equivalent to the uh, US GDP. So there is a, a big loss uh, in the output. There is a crisis due to the price volatility. You know, we are, we are suffering from, from the inflation uh, in several areas and um, even most consumable goods like food, energy. Energy is the most um, uh, uh, affected for inflation. Um, um, and even nowadays, we are suffering from the price hike of uh, in the energy. Um, food is the second, um, um, uh, second third element that has the uh, price hike due to this uh, pandemic. And there are other, other elements as well. So this is the you know, severe case uh, for the livelihood of the people who lost their job. This, uh, you know, food security, hunger. Hunger has been raised by 130 million Already in a globe, there were more than 800 million people uh, in food and secure zone. But due to this pandemic, that has raised to around the billion people having the food, and, uh, food insecure. 320 million primary school children 
are missing the school not only missing the school they are missing the school meals that means they are again pushed to the food insecure zone oxfam is, is, estimates that uh, this corona epidemic added half a billion people pushed half a billion people in the uh, uh, poverty zone therefore it is a severe case of poverty as well and economic inequality expanded even in this pandemic 10 richest men double their income whereas 99% of humanity fall or their, their income is getting down so this there is a um, much economic inequality uh, um, uh, raised and digital divide is a, as an issue because uh, during the pandemic most of the schools most of the offices they use the digital um, workplace and people without having knowledge of digital and uh, uh, digitalization and having the lack of um, um, instrument they they are deprived of having the job or having the education then this is the uh, situation then what is the green growth and how can we solve uh, uh, corona uh, corona economics through the green growth green growth is just a um, you know um, uh, phenomena that shift the concept of not only growth but with environmental protection conventionally uh, in fact the new liberal economy that more focuses on the growth in any any um, case we should have a economic growth but the green growth that focuses more on growth with environmental and social concerns and when we uh, we talk about environmental then the carbon economic growth um, low carbon uh, is the main uh, thrust of the uh, of the green growth it covers the holistic um, growth of economic social and environmental when we talk about the um, uh, sustainable growth or you know uh, environmental environmental friendly growth then we we talk about two elements one is greenhouse gas emission and the other is environmental pollution carbon dioxide is the main uh, cause of the greenhouse gas emission and methyl nitro nitrous oxide they they contribute for the pollution and also the environmental degradation so these these three elements more concern is with three these three elements the what is the present con condition of carbon emission you know we have a more trend when when we talk about development we uh, we generally think about concrete uh, infrastructure that con concrete infrastructure is uh, have the higher rate of uh, carbon um, um, emission air percent of the carbon dioxide we emit comes from the uh, concrete infrastructure that is one part of industrial emission and uh, even it is more than from the aviation industry aviation emits 2.5% of the total emission but the concrete infra uh, infrastructure or use of concrete that emits 8% of the carbon um likewise within 3 years we will reach to 1.5 degree centigrade greater than the time of pre industrialization and by 2000 2100 it may reach to 3 degree centigrade if it moves as usual if there is no intervention to protect or to to you know address the climate change then it will reach up to 3 degree centigrade then what will happen uh, in the earth we cannot imagine so wfp and fao and other other you know organization global organization they are saying that it is not the glimpse into the future but it is the daily reality of the present time so we need to um uh, you know have some some sort of intervention in the present time not wait for the future developing countries have the highest uh, carbon emission Uh, like us and saudi arabia whereas g20 nations have all together 78% carbon emission that is the biggest g20 nations are the biggest 
carbon emitters. Developing countries, they do, they do not have much uh, emission. They have the least emission. For example, Uganda has just 1.13 tons of carbon dioxide. Um, Nepal has just 0.04 percentage of the world's volume. So it is very negligent if we talk about in term of global volume. Agriculture has also the um, um, higher rate of carbon emission. Um, so this um, you know, graph shows the carbon dioxide emission from 1850 to 2040. There is a projection uh, as well um, um, uh, until 2040. Therefore, 19, um, uh, 1930 or 1940, we take this, uh, this point as a um, before that, uh, pre pre industrialization, then from the industrialization era, the carbon emission has gone up um, uh, in a, in a in a higher slope. So so uh, it shows that carbon emission increases with the industrialization, and industrialization increases with the uh, you know, economic growth or economic um, um, uh, development. The biggest carbon, carbon emitters is the power stations, 21%. Then the second is industrial processes. Third is transportation fuels. Then the agriculture. Agriculture has, also, has the bigger, uh, you know, share of carbon emission. But the agriculture, that more contributes for the methyl and uh, nitrous oxide so it is also you know contributing for the for polluting the environment the america was the you know biggest carbon emitter since 2005 but when the china grows up in a in a uh, in an economic sense and nowadays it became the globally first uh, biggest economic had the biggest economy. With that economy, the, the carbon emission is also going up. And now it, it is the biggest uh, carbon emitters in the globe, then the America. And India is also growing up. As its economy grow, um, uh, grow up, the carbon emission is also growing up and um, uh, coming close to third position. As it has already been uh, positioned as the third uh, bigger economy in the world. So this is the situation uh, of carbon emitters. China has the, um, you know, highest carbon emission. That, that counts 26.1% of the global store of the carbon. Whereas America, almost one half, than the other countries. So, in terms of total carbon emission, China has the biggest volume. But in terms of per, per person carbon emission, US is uh, the first one. And China, Russia, second. The China is fourth one. It is because it has been said that US uses more vehicles. For example, there is more than 750 vehicles for 1,000 population, whereas China has 145 vehicles for 1,000 population. But we can imagine that China is growing in its economic term, then more people will use um, uh, more vehicles. Then what will happen when the more people use uh, vehicles in China, since it has the biggest population? So it is, uh, but during the um, pandemic, the graph shows that there is a, you know, uh, decrease in carbon um, emission, all negative. So, so um, uh, we can also say that um, the positive um, uh, thing is uh, due to this pandemic, the earth gets some, somehow balanced uh, you know environmental position uh, so this uh, this uh, this is from green future report 2021
However, uh, this Green Future uh, report, uh, it calculates um, the position of 76 countries which are go doing good and which are not, uh, you know, uh, putting any concern in, in carbon emissions. So this is the condition. And these this, uh, green um, countries with green score, they are, uh, you know, the countries um, having the, you know, lessened um, carbon emission. And other countries, they are, you know, they have the increasing carbon emission. So uh, with this, we can say that these countries are, you know, putting more effort for uh, lessening the carbon emission. Likewise, that is society. How much society is aware with this carbon emission? You know, so that they they use the green infrastructure, green building, recycling, forestation around their their uh, you know settlement, uh, low meat and dairy consumption. So these people, Singapore, Ireland, South Korea, uh, these these green um, scoring countries, they are very much. Um, performed uh, for building green society, whereas these countries are not much aware with these um, uh, these things, these interventions. Again, climate policy. This, this, uh, you know, um, um, with green scoring, they have the good policy to address the climate change or uh, climate change risk reduction, whereas. These countries, South Africa, Peru, Ghana, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, these countries are, uh, they do not have much, uh, you know, focused uh, policies to address this climate change, uh, risk reduction or uh, addressing climate change. This green growth is a major contributor for, uh, you know, sustainable development goals. That is the goal all the countries are committed for. And um, um, most of the, you know, uh, goals are um, somehow related with this green growth. For example, in poverty and hunger, that is very much related to the agriculture and, uh, and food security and very much related with the environmental friendly interventions, um, you know, uh, even planet, partnership, peace, prosperity, all these are around with uh, green growth, and and these are for the uh, uh, sustainable development goals. There are several global efforts uh, to have the uh, environmental friendly policy force. For example, um, there may be some before that 1949, but I got it um, from the website that the UN Scientific Conference in 1949 that. Um, that is the one which, uh, um, you know, spoke about the conservation and utilization of resources. It has been said that it more focused the focus to the utilization of resources, how to utilize the resources rather than conservation. So even it is, um, it has been influenced with the, with growing the economic growth. Likewise, uh, there was a uh, second scientific con conference mm, in 1972 that first raised the issue of climate change. And that has been taken as a, you know, um, foundation for uh, raising the issue of climate change. There was a climate conference in 1979, the Montreal Protocol in 1989, that first time talk about the ozone layer and they, they make the policy for uh, addressing that, uh, deleting the ozone layer. Rio de Janeiro, the Earth Summit in 1992, it has been taken as a very important summit that established international environmental and development activities. And Paris Agreement, we mostly refer, when we talk about green growth and environment, we refer the Paris Agreement. It has been signed in 1915 and uh, um, it set the global uh, climate goals to keep global temperature within 1.5 degrees, not to go beyond that one. That has been set by Paris Agreement and we all are tending to, 
tending towards that one. COP26 uh, also, um, you know, declare something based on this Paris declaration. Now we come to Nepal. Nepal has a very diverse, you know, um, um, uh, environmental uh, situation. The high with 34 degrees centigrade to low minus 16, that much diverse within this um, uh, small territory. So with this, we can say that there is so many uh, hazards within this uh, range. 80% of population is at the risk from natural and climate induced hazards in Nepal. 80% population, that's the big. During last 40 years, $6 billion physical and economic loss due to natural disasters. In 2012, we have a big earthquake and still we are in the process of recovering that. So there is a great loss. Mountains are changing their faces. Mountain, mountain are no more in a silver color. <laughs> there are so many mountains with black color. More people lost jobs, moved to poverty, hunger, due to the climate change risk, due to that pandemic as well. Local food system has damaged, not only the local food system, but local systems, local knowledge, local, local skills, you know, um, and, and, and native tradition or oh, everything has been damaged due to globalization and due to, uh, even due to the climate uh, change. In Nepal, this is the carbon emission. In 2020, 23 million metric tons of carbon has been emitted in Nepal 2020. And in uh, Nepal's uh, long-term strategy for net zero emission. If it goes like this, there will be 79 million metric tons carbon emission by 2050. And the biggest contributor in carbon emission is in Nepal, this is industrial production. So industrial production has the highest contribution um, in Nepal for uh, carbon emission. And the second is land use. Land use and forestry, you know, degrading forestry, um, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, fire in uh, forestry, that is also contributing for the carbon emission. But Nepal's strategy is that we bring it down uh, by 2050. We will be carbon neutral in 2045 and carbon negative in 2050. So we have some sort of intervention. We will not allow to go as usual. Rather, we will bring down to uh, carbon negative situation by 2050. This, this is the photo, you know, photo of Sindhu Palsuk Limi last year. It had, there, uh, there was a line, uh, landslide, you know, burying almost 21 people in this ground. Uh, you see, this is not a big, it, it, it doesn't look big and severe one, but if there, it's, it seems that if there were some, some plantation, it would not happen, uh, happen. But this is small landslide from this um, 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 place, it buried 21 people within that, uh, within the mud. And you know, as I say that mountains faces are changing their color and it is, they are less silver, more black. The, the roads are going in Nepal. There is a trend of, you know, building, constructing road uh, in, 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 in hilly areas, even, uh, even, you know, cutting down the trees. Um, yeah, that is that is also degrading the climate. With this, we, the the water sources have been, you know, lost, and people are suffering from getting water. It shows this this photo from Kantipur uh, newspaper. 
uh, shows this this issue and this is the development our development the, the after federal federalist the local government is doing this and and uh, there, there it seems that there is no plan where where that that excavator moves on but this is the development um, that that also degrades the um, uh, environment these are some people you know the community uh, is still um, on the process of their one civilization routing they are routing um, community who uh, moves around the uh, forest and they they make their you know temporary settlement cutting trees and they, after two or three months they again move on so these communities this sort of communities um uh, also a cause of uh, environment degradation this this is um chure you know degrading chure due to this uh, degradation of chure and the the water uh, you know source in tarai in our has already been um, uh, waterless so there is a water problem um, uh, drinking water problem in tarai uh, as well this is you know um uh, near chure getting this these materials degrading the um, uh, you know environment degrading the forest you know our development train you know uh, even <laughs> constructing trees with concrete and even in in park even in the uh, in the middle of the of the forest they make park and when we talk about you know building park or constructing park then the concrete is used so there is no use of you know indigenous knowledge or our you know native um, uh, skill this is the situation you know cutting down the trees and making the um, uh, concrete trees sorry our situation is is uh, this you know uh, using the um, um, you know oxygen cylinder and planting a um, uh, plan <laughs> policies we have very nice policies many policies um, uh, to address climate change for example red strategy it it is started in 2018 national Efe uh, energy efficiency strategy climate change policy in 2019 that identifies the sources of greenhouse uh, gas emission national determined contribution ndc it is now a mandatory to most of the nations national adaptation plan it it planned until 2050 nepal's education policy it it uh, you know assures at least one student one tree and one school one garden you know making the school green green school strategy national uh, nepal adopted the grid approach grid approach is uh, green uh, uh, resilience and inclusive development approach in 2021 there was a conference uh, international conference on nepal's reconstruction uh, and uh, it adopted that grid approach we have a climate ambition in cop 26 our minister our government Uh, you know um announced that we will have carbon neutral between 2022 and 2045 and become carbon negative after as per the strategy by 2050 we will have carbon negative that is a, um, again a, de a declaration or a, a declaration from nepal in uh, during cop 26 for that the cost is also estimated 196 billion dollar um, will be needed to address those issues there are some some uh, ways globally adopted for example esg is one environment social and governance how to you know um, build these uh, three elements in one so that every development would be environmental friendly or greenery 
the grid is the most uh, uh, you know accepted approach globally which which you know more focuses on greening the development resilience building especially for the country like us who suffers 80% of population suffers from suffer from um, uh, climate is and the inclusion this is the grids approach and which is accepted globally it is because it links people planet and economy previously our uh, new liberal economic policy that more focuses on economy you know living planet even living the people so there are so many deprived people and there is there is so many gap between have and have nots but this grid or green economy links all these three elements people planet economy into one circle green job creation is the biggest challenge and that is the there is the opportunity as well and uh, when we we um, uh, intervene well then there will be a green job um, you know uh, innovation how can we do it we can do it by reskilling the people you know our present skill may not be useful in this new normal situation we should have more you know uh, digital skill more software skill so we should have reskilling or that 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 is some some sort of innovation in the skill and how can we get it we can get it through the green entrepreneurship any entrepreneurship that should be linked with green that should be linked with low carbon emission and every job should be linked with the skill of low carbon emission there is a economic solution as well globally it is called the trade carbon trade you know there is a um, threshold um, that that uh, emits global per capita average um, um, uh, carbon and emitters more than that average will pay 10 dollar per ton and the emitters less than that average will get that amount and nepal sometime got some amounts um, uh, through the carbon trade and that is a economic you know uh, solution but the more solution is how to you know um, uh, reduce the uh, emitters to the 1.5 less than 1.5 degree celsius uh, position so better solution is green growth development every country every um, uh, people if they they follow the green growth pattern then that is the good solution so the, that green growth um is based on the green economy and which addresses not only the economic shocks but it also addresses human pains natural calamity and social atrocities there are so many social atrocities even generated by new liberal economy there is a human pains due to this globalization and the new liberal economy so this green uh, growth development strategy or in other words we can say green economy can address all these elements human elements human pains economic shocks the the hazards uh, induced by natural calamities and social atrocities so the green economy green economy is embedded with protective liberalism this is again a Uh, again termed by myself and there is a paper on uh, this protective liberalism or we can also say uh, pro liberalism to protect and it protects from vulnerability of people and the planet both the protective liberalism in spite of new liberalism it protects vulnerable people and the vulnerability of the planet so green economy is very much embedded with the protective liberalism and we can find this paper so there are several elements of green growth 
it it may differ from country to country which which elements is more prevalent and which is less so these are the green uh, elements of green growth which um, address human pains economic shock social atrocities and natural calamities or hazards of the natural calamities so the green growth is a, a very integrated approach to address climate change not only the climate change the pandemic like we are suffering now so what can we do there are, there are few points i think i am coming to the end uh, the first thing is investment you know public investment more focusing to environmental infrastructure rather than concrete infrastructure science based land use land use uh, we see that it has a you know a second highest contributor uh, for the um, um, carbon emission so there should be a good land a scientific based land use and there should be a integrated settlement until and unless we have a, this scattered type of settlement uh, it would not be possible you know, to have a scientific um, based land use science based land use so we should have a integrated settlement you know choosing some clusters and bringing the people into that cluster for example uh, in in manang there are only uh, around uh, 4 4000 population with i think three or four uh, local government if we bring all these uh, people into the you know uh, district headquarter and make a um, uh, um, you know good settlement integrated settlement then that would have a economic less economic uh, uh, you know uh, in, uh, intervention promotion of cleaner production basically reduce reuse and recycling wastage and innovating solar and other other renewable energy strict um, uh, implementation of environmental laws there should be a good envi environmental justice that justice has should be backed by the laws uh, sanitation is there green growth in government programs you know the government should be the lead um, um to have a green growth uh, initiation and development of core of green growth trainers you know green growth capacity building in fact we can say that capacity building of the bureaucracy as well as to the citizens the most important thing is consumption having a less carbon um, emitting consumption that would be the by the government and by the people so we can um, uh, in a public procurement there should be a policy of procuring things having a less carbon emission likewise we can decarbonizing uh, decarbonize from our kitchen you know the kitchen uh, our kitchen is also a you know source of carbon emission i have a podcast there um, about how can how to Uh, decarbonize our kitchen uh, you can see it in uh, you can visit the youtube um, um, about that one the other is integra integrating national strategies on green growth development that would be a national framework we have a many many um, uh, policies plans uh, action plans and so many you know policy um, uh, you know diversity as well so bringing all those policies in one bundle that would be a integrated national strategy or national policy and each and every local government make a action plan accordingly and that should be a uh, in a higher priority even now when we uh, we have a budget uh, allocation then we should uh, also calculate how much um, um, that budget has impacted for um, uh, uh, environmental friendly activities environment neutral activities and um, other activities so there is a policy but there should be a action plan with each and every local government and other thing is promoting and 
preserving our native knowledge, skill, and arts. There is a native knowledge, skill, and arts that can protect environment. That is the you know. Um, th th these are the you know measures we have been able to protecting our environment. So we should have restore uh, restore those local systems, and that local system not only restores, not only, you know, protect the environment, but also strengthen the local government. For example, local food system, local economic system, local um, market system, that, that has to be restored so that it will help making green society. This is, this is um, uh, you know, uh, major thing. And these are some, there are some photos. For example, in some um, uh, countries, they are they are you know intervening for urban forestry. Even though there is a roads, there are buildings, but there still there is some places to have the plantation. How to save water? I, I got it from the social media. This photo, you know, saving the water. Uh, you know, integrated settlement. It can be one one way, but it uh, it covers more lands, so we can have other other sort of uh, settlement as well. This is the um, uh, you know way we can use the renewable energy, solar power, even in this uh, this sort of areas. Then at the end, yeah, green growth knowledge platform. We need a green growth knowledge platform platform, um, um, like you know, Fan has done. Uh, this event and there should be several platforms so that we can talk, we can um, sensitize the people. Supporting government initiative for green growth development. Government has also planned so many, uh, you know, uh, things for green growth development, but there should be a uh, export support uh, to uh, move forward. Local system development and community resilience. Local system development brings the community resilience so we should you know restore our local systems that has been you know ruined by the globalization or other 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 you know initiatives campaigning through volunteering you know we should have mobilized youth volunteers to you know awaiting people thank you so much with this i came to the end of this presentation i have some papers in this a link. Thank you.